OK, so we've got another navigation challenge for you. And this time what we've got to do is choose the best route from this path junction here at A to this tiny little pond at B. And we also know that the pond is very small, probably only about five metres across. Um, so it's going to be hard to see until you're almost upon it, especially in bad visibility. So on these challenges, think about worst case scenario, a foggy day. And we also know that the surrounding moorland is deep in heather. So you're going to be making your way through this kind of terrain, which is going to add to the difficulties. So what's the strategy for this? Well, we need to, first of all, find something called an attack point. And what that is, is a known point that we can navigate to accurately and then take a compass bearing and accurate measurement to the destination. And then we need to follow that compass bearing very accurately and work out how much distance we've covered. And a good way of doing that is by counting your paces. If you know how many paces you take for 100 metres, then you can count paces covering a distance and that will help you get close to that destination and prevent you from overshooting it. So what can we use as attack points in this case? Well we're going to use one of these two parallel paths to get us towards the destination and then we could use something like the end of that track there where it crosses the path and go in from there or we could go a bit further on onto this bridal way up here and find an attack point along here. So we could use some of these outcrops, although it's quite hard to know exactly where the outcrop finishes um, according to the map. So a lot of this is bouldery ground here, so to be able to say for certain that you are absolutely here and going from there would be quite difficult. And you've also got a little bit of extra ground to cover from the bridal track. Some people suggested you might go up to that point there, that kink in the in the track, and come back. Um, by doing that, you're going quite a long way past the destination, only to come back again across that rough moorland. Other ways of doing it is we could go up to these streams here and navigate maybe from the end of that stream and in, or even from one of these little tiny kinks in the stream. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend that way because one is going to be wet underfoot um, and also to be able to identify that you are on that particular kink in the stream is going to be really difficult. So the way I recommend doing it is going up and finding this the corner of this field boundary here, this northwest corner of it where it meets the bridle track because that is an absolute, absolute known definite point. And we then take an accurate compass bearing from there to the pond and, and also an accurate distance measurement. And we've done this on a navigation course. I think what we get is 360 meters and a bearing of 325 degrees. So from there to there. Now, knowing our pacing for 100 metres will allow us to pace 360 metres. If in bad visibility we don't see the pond, at least that's going to tell us that we've overshot it. So if we're counting and we got up to 380 metres or 400 metres, we know we've overshot and we're in this land here. If we're just going without an idea of how much distance we've covered, then how do we know whether we got to here or here or here or here? So knowing your pacing, and it's usually double paces per 100 metres, is a really accurate way of helping us with that. So that's one way of doing it. You might have other ideas, um, but that's the way that I would recommend doing it. So hope that helps. Hope you've learned something.